Uganda yaincha. All right, it is a good morning here in Africa, in Uganda. My name is Moses Swamala. We are glad that you tuned into this channel, Uganda Yencha. It's our pleasure, of course, this morning we are coming to you from Luzira. Uh, Portobello. Portobello, yes. I'm not your prisoner. <laughs> Many people, when you pronounce Luzira, of course, they think you are at the upper prison, Luzira Maximum Prison, but we are not there. We are at the residence of uh, Dr. Miria Koburunga Matembe. We've come here to pick her views on the recent happenings, even uh, to understand how she has fared with her or how they has fared with her in regards to good governance, democracy, and uh, justice and human rights, because that's what she represents, or she has represented that for many years uh, while uh, serving this country. So we are going to pick her views in regards to the recent happenings, even including the recent interview President Tiwe Kakuta Museven did with, uh, of course, uh, my fellow Remy Bahati in the U.S. in regards to whatever is happening here in Uganda. It is a good morning, Doctor. We've braved the rains today to be here. Uh, we are happy that God has protected you and kept you alive. Yes, of course. Yeah, of course. angels are on guard 24-7 yes. here at your home. We are yes, glad are right. that he has given you life and you're part of those people who are winding up 2022 uh, peacefully and, of course, healthy. We are so happy about that. Yeah, thank you very much to, to note that actually it is God who yeah. has kept me. Yes. Because for me, with Jesus in the boat, I can yes. smile at the storms. Yes. And that's what... I have been doing yeah. and I praise the Lord mm. for that. I also thank the Lord by the way for you people the praise yes. seeking me out every time yes. I, I should be long forgotten mm. <laughs> because when I was thrown I'd say long go like yeah. garbage and mm. forgotten but uh, you the praise we keep, never forget keep you. thinking that I have something to offer yes. and you look me up and I want to thank you particularly for for this day, breathing this rain. Yes. You know, you found when I was still sleeping at <laughs> nine o'clock mm. because I, I I was saying her, I pity people who are still working. Mm. How do you get up at this time and go to the office? How yeah. do you move there? Mm. Only here you walking in. I said that uh, these people they really love their yes. job. This is but what do you love your job or you love Worokoso? Uh -uh. you, <laughs> you seek up Matembe to use her mouse for your Doctor, Oroko -so. we love our job because you can't <laughs> leave your sleep amid this this rain. Yeah. Because the issues we discuss, they are patent issues and of which issues to do with democracy. We have to brave everything, be it rain, be what, so good we are here. Sacrifice for your nation. Yes, very yeah. good. So, Service-oriented leadership yes. is lacking in this country mm. now. Mm. So when you see somebody sacrificing, like I'm doing also, because yeah. why yes. should I yes. wake up? Yes, very good. <laughs> and be disturbed. In you're the in your retirement, you but you're not tired yet. Dream. Yeah. Yeah, yes. you are welcome usually, mm. really, and I want to thank the Lord who has kept you this far up yes. to now. Yes. Today is 21st December. Mm. We are praying that the remaining is it mm. yes. 10 days mm. will go well so that yes. we walk in mm. 2023. Because I can't really forget to thank God for your life because many have perished and uh, yeah, they have gone. Yeah, especially the last three weeks. Very good. They have been terrible. Every, almost every night. Mm. I've been either at a vigil mm. or at yes. a service, funeral service. Mm. Vigil or funeral service. Yeah. In this neighborhood, we have lost is it four oh very, very God. close people. Mm. I lost my brother-in-law, Nekemia's brother. Uh, I, I, 20, I think it was 25th. Mm. And we've lost. I lost a sister in love. I lost... Eh, Mm. It has been tough. It is tough. We are closing fingers. I lost my uh, husband of my very great friend of women's movement, Florian Subutegua. Mm. So it has been tough. Yeah. But I say, the word of God says that in all things, we must give thanks yes. to God. Yes. Because he's the one. Indeed, he's the one who chooses that I, I should be here. Yeah. And even talking to you right now. Yes. Can you imagine? Yeah. We must thank him uh, purely for that life and that you're still speaking because many politicians who go into retirement like you, few of them can actually spare time to 
keep doing what they were doing. You know, for me, I was forced into retirement. Yes. I didn't retire voluntarily. Voluntarily. And therefore, I still, oh, I'm still equipped with my biggest talent, which God gave me, yeah. which is my mouth, which mm. he gave me according to Isaiah chapter 49, verse 1 to 3, you go and read. Mm. So I will use that talent of the mouth until he calls me home. Yeah. And even when I reach there, I will use it to account to him mm. on what I did. Yeah. Because all of us are really accountable to our God for the talents that he gave us to use. In service of our people, mm. not in service of ourselves. In fact, yes. in service of his people, mm. not ourselves. Doctor, let me take you out of the year's fair, Doctor. I'd love to pick your views on now on how you've perceived the year. Uh, we as the press, we've uh, perceived it this way. Abductions, abductions, abductions. And uh, the injustice is still uh, marrying this country. I don't know, on the side of human rights, justice, democracy, how you've perceived this year, how has it treated Ugandans and how has it treated you? You know, the, the problem yeah. with me mm. is that one time I was reading a book in my literature. You know, I studied literature. Oh, okay. I think it was Tobias and the Angel. Mm. And uh, there was a statement which caught my attention and I really applied it mm. several times. It said that the, the future and the past are over high walls. Mm. And we need not look over the walls even if we could. Yes. So that puts me in a, a picture that like what I saw yesterday, what was burning me with the passion and that kind of thing, once it is done, then for me, it is like it gets out and I move on. Mm. So to give you a detailed account of what happened in 2022, 2022 mm. I will not really practical and fairly put, portray it very well. Mm. Because for me, it, I, it comes, I go, I shout, I fight, I end, another chapter comes. Okay. But what I can recall generally mm. It hasn't been really a beautiful year, okay. especially for the powerless, for the voiceless, and for the weak. Mm. It hasn't. For the rich, and those who are grabbing our land, who are yes. taking all the wealth, who, it could have been good for them, but I want to tell you that one day the wicked will perish. Mm. But for the vulnerable, for the weak, for the powerless, it has been a bad year. Mm. Because I personally has even been mm. fighting. It has not been just the state doing wrong, but also individual people doing wrong. Mm. You, like you find these parents who have gone crazy, the, the, the parents who are marrying out their daughters at 15, at 14, girls have been running to my home here and have been running all over the place with the help of, of police to, to redeem girls from marriage. To return cows. Mm. You know, it has been, when I talk of the weak and the vulnerable, the, the impact is not from the state only, state institutions, but also yes. the human beings. Mm. The level of moral decadence and ethical value degeneration has raised okay. so high. Mm. And, and, and humanity seems to have left human beings. And people are driven by self-centeredness, by materialism, by wealth, on, and uh, stepping on the weak, the vulnerable, mm. and, and the powerless. And of course, the state also has been involved in, in some of these things. For instance, when you go to people who are grabbing land, whom do you find? You find big people mm. who are backed by big people in government. For instance, I tell you there is a certain case I'm following up. And the, the father came here crying, telling me, the man is big, the man is big, big. I say, is it, is it size that is big mm. because he's the chairman, the vice chairman, Soro, Soro, Soro. NRIM okay. resistance movement mm. party. And then she's the chairman of Central Central in Chisoro district. This is a guy who defiled a girl who abducted her and used her. And I got the girl when she was unconscious dying. Mm. I followed the matter to the maximum ability. I reached the police eventually, arrested him, put him in. But what did the court do? Release him on bail on a charge which is not bailable. 
and he's there walking on the street and the parent is still coming here and so I'm telling you the state institutions have been captured by the state the state has captured the big people in authority captured institutions like the courts the courts cannot be free to administer mm. justice mm. Okay. because powers from above are stopping them and and the, the, the legislation of course the legislature you can see mm. recently mm. what I saw really instead of defending like these people who have been their members who have been in prison for good two they are going to two years, two years now yeah. in prison for for what? Because no, who who stops them from because the law I studied is that once you have you are in co in prison for a whole year without the case mm. being decided or mm. had, mm. then bail is automatic. But here we have the speaker, instead of redeeming his people, those colleagues, they are talking about their own things, they are fighting mm. their own wars, they are, they are censuring the, the, the opposition, Driving they are doing posh cars. all this kind of thing. Yeah. Posh cars, which they don't even, the other day I listened to this, hopeless, sorry, <laughs> let me withdraw the word, yeah, okay. but they mm. have had it. Mm. <laughs> When I had this Kenya man saying that 200 millions is a little money to buy us very good vehicles. Oh my. And in any case, we need 400 and we need a driver who is paid for. I want to ask, and I'm not praising myself. Me, mm. Miriam Matembe, I worked for this government for good 30 years. Yes. Out of the 30, the 20, I was a politician. Mm. You go all over Uganda, you hear where they don't know Matembe. But I never got a free vehicle. I never got a free vehicle. I got a loan and bought my vehicle. Yes. I never got a free driver. I never got anything free. Everything was from my Casmoro money of 7 million mm. a month, which I earned to travel the whole country to go everywhere. Now, who are they? These, these new people who have taken the biggest budget in this, in this country. Who are they to say that even, look at the teachers. The teachers cannot be paid. The doctors do not have their salary. They don't, have, they don't even have vehicles. The hospitals are suffering. And then the members of parliament, moreover, 529, whose talk we don't even hear, whose debate we don't even see, they want beyond 200 million to buy the, who are they? Who are they? Is there any single member of parliament who is better than a teacher who teaches mm. my children? Mm. Who is the better doctors. than a doctor who has, for yeah. instance, operated my eye? Mm. Eh? What are they doing? They are there. And then, of course, when you go to government itself, because of the greed to stay in power forever, eh? mm. they, they, they have shut down the people. Civil society yes. cannot talk. Mm. It was shut down. Most of them were disbanded. Oh, 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 Sedu. Yeah. I was, mm. was spearheading stay Sedu, mm. Citizens Coalition for Electoral Democracy, which was good, you know, to oversee yes. and watch Elections, over the yeah. democratic the governance. Yes, yeah. you, you remember uh, Chapter 4, mm -hmm. you remember Greece, mm. you remember because we are the voice talking, when they shut us down, the rest of civil society now are concerned with every day-to-day -day official work, not public. Do you hear their voice anymore? Not so really. the voice of the people, the voice of the people have become voiceless. Because those whom they elect to go and voice for them, mm. voice for themselves, the government they put in power shuts them down. The civil society was supposed to be talking for them, raising their concerns. They are shut down. And if you continue, they arrest you like Kaburita. Mm. Recently, they arrested Kaburita. And we had to go and say, why, but why do you arrest Kaburita? Because he is talking about economic what? Mobilizing yes, people economic for economic empowerment. empowerment. Actually, yes, now, yeah. anybody now who goes to the public, to open the eyes, to, to teach people, mm. unless you are NRIM. If you are not NRIM, you are another person, and you go to, to, the, to the public 
to talk to the people. Mm. They don't want you to do so. On many occasions, I remember even uh, uh, on the eve of actually, or before the elections of the 2021 elections, mm. about the closure of many civil society organizations. President Museven addressed the nation and said that some of these organizations were actually dealing with uh, uh, Europeans actually to uh, do uncertain things, to do bad things to this country which is not good for democracy. He said that's why uh, organizations like GLIS, like SEDU, and uh, this one actually, which was uh, putting a lot of money in Uganda. Uh, DGF. DGF. Hmm. They were doing... And what I'm telling you now, well, I have talked and talked about absence of democracy in this country. This country has nothing to do with democracy. Democracy ended long ago mm. when the term limit was removed, the age limit was removed, and the whole thing surrounded NRM as a party. Mm. And as a party, it is in form of one individual, and that is one president, Museveni. Mm. And unless NRM says something, Anybody else should do what? Should not say anything. Now, in, in democratic governance, we have alternative views. Mm -hmm. That is what democratic governance means. Yes. Moreover, multi-party democratic governance. Mm. It understands and recognizes diff divergent views. Mm. And these divergent views are respected. When you run for government, and one party wins, the other party is opposition. Opposition is not an enemy. Opposition is a party which offers an alternative view, which says, if it was me, I would do like this. And therefore, its role in parliament and in government is to constructively critique the government yes. by opening its eyes. You are failing here. You are failing here. You are not doing right here. That is what opposition is supposed to do. Now, civil society organizations are supposed to supplement the work of government. Because I have worked, I established many civil society organizations, mm. particularly human rights and women's rights. And before the government went into dictatorship, before President Museveni's government became a dictatorship, we were working, supplementing the work of the government. Why? Because we reach everywhere. Civil society, you find an organization, NGO, is there in, in a village, they mobilize themselves, they try to make, to make themselves knowledgeable, they, they equip them with the knowledge to do with the law, with the knowledge to do economy, with the knowledge, and they, and they grow. And so they reach everywhere. We were reaching everywhere. I remember if it was not for civil society organizations like UESO, mm, when the yes. first lady came here and yes. we, 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 with her, we mobilized and formed UESO. We redeemed the orphans. The government could not have done anything to the orphans whom we redeemed. And some of them are now big, big people in this country. And then, of course, Action for Development, then Women Lawyers Association, then uh, you, 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 all these organizations, Foundation for Human Rights, we started these organizations and we were working very closely with the government because we were complementing the work of government. Mm. Now, I want the public listening to me to understand what happens when dictatorship comes in. Because when you are working, civil society, you are supposed to do what is good. You are supposed to criticize what is not good because you are working for the people. Yes. The people. So when things go wrong, you are supposed to question them and challenge them. Mm. In a democratic government, when you challenge them, they feel good. They say, hey, we have foreign, foreign shot here. Because I remember when I was in civil society in, in Mbarara District Women Development Association, the Minister of Gender itself gave me funding to go and train women in Barara because for them they did not have the capacity to go and train. So they funded me in Barara to mm. go and, and train women. And then even when I would bring proposals and put them there, even American embassy, where, where, they would fund us and we mobilize 
and we train women on their legal rights on economic empowerment and the country was better. I'm telling you, the people on the ground were much better than what they are now. But when dictatorship comes in, it doesn't want any criticism. And therefore, if you are a civil society organization, they label, because you will criticize, so they label you an enemy. Mm -hmm. And now, many of the civil society organizations which have remained here, some of them, they are agents of, of what? Mm -hmm. Some of them mm -hmm. have been recruited as agents of, of the government. So, the, thing, the most important thing, bad thing that has happened here in this country is close down of democratic governance. Right now, we are in a total dictatorship because I have lived in this country for long. Yes. These days, you go and sit near somebody and you raise anything to, hey, but government, oh, they walk away. They run away. They are so scared. The fear has gripped Uganda just like it was in a means time as it was in Oboti's time. And for me, I'm so glad that I'm one person who has remained alive in these governments. I don't know both the one, mm, mm. but I know I mean, and I know both the two. And sometimes I say that probably why some of these people who are in NRIM, probably why they don't understand when we are telling them what, what we see, is because they never remained here. While I was here suffering during Obote II's time, President Museven and his people, Bushmen, were not here. They were in the bush. They can't tell you, they can't tell the story of what they suffered in the bush, but they can't tell the story of what we are going through here. Mm. If I tell you how I suffered, me, I suffered, I was at Uganda College of Commerce teaching. There was this man called Owani. He would say, look at your nose, go, follow your brother in the bush. Eh, young men who were in, you know, in school, in, in UCC, they had to go away. You would say, look at your nose. And the man tortured me, my tembe, go and follow your brother in the bush. And, you know, it was so painful. We suffered, we ran. If you ask my husband, they arrested him, put him in prison, knocked his teeth. We went through many bad things. We know this. And so when the president came in, we embraced 100%. Never did I expect that such a thing would come back. Now I'm the one now suffering. Can you imagine? Mm. Well, I suffered during Obote time. Obote's time, Now yes. during my, my, my brother's time, he throws me away, get out. And, you mm. know, I was for, voluntarily retired when I still had the energy to work for this country. But I'm so glad that for me, because God protects me, hey, hey, who can come? When the angels are on guard, you let them. <laughs> but otherwise... I'm here now suffering. Mm. I expected us to, to be redeemed. But I want to tell President Museven and his people that what we saw in Amin's time, what we saw in Oboti's time, what we experienced is what we are experiencing now. And therefore, it is a dictatorship. It is a dictatorship. That's why people are suffering. Doctor, back to justice. And by the way, one yeah. thing I want to say is this. Yes, there are these ADF mm -hmm. whom they are arresting and, and killing. But I want to tell you that if it was not for dictatorship and closing space for other people of alternative views, we wouldn't be having these wars. Mm. We wouldn't. Because if all Ugandans who can speak can freely speak here, if Ugandans can go and hold free and fair elections, here, when the Electoral Commission is not a direct agent of NRIM, eh? if the Electoral Commission was independent, if electoral processes were fair and running in the right way, if we go and we lose the election, would we run to the bush or would we have to be arrested? Eh? And you know one thing that hurts me is that President Museven himself experienced the reading of elections. He experienced the reading of elections mm. And he said, when these elections are rigid, I will go to the bush. And when they were rigid, he went to the bush. And he used to say, when he came back, that democracy is not a form. Yes. Democracy is not in form. And I agreed with him 100%. Because of what he was saying, yeah, we went through elections. But which elections? 
when like 40 seats were already declared on opposed because people were closed out, when you are going to your uh, uh, polling, you are, you are locked out, you cannot be nominated, time is, it takes over, uh, time runs up when you are imprisoned somewhere. I mean, and then you say that is election. So President Museven came and said, democracy is substance, not in a not, form. Yeah, not form yeah. It is not in a form, it must be in substance. Can you imagine that this is the very person who is now saying, yeah, I'm elected by Ugandans. Yeah. He has turned elections and democracy into mere form, not substance. And I, I wonder, I usually wonder, you know, for me, Maria, I can't say something today and tomorrow I say another one. Mm. I stick to what I say. But now, you mean he doesn't see that his democracy has turned into a total, total form, total form, nothing to do with substance. Doctor, do you sit back and, rel and ponder about, uh, or oh, even regret trusting President M7 for all those years? Me? Yeah, do you regret? Uh -uh. Me, I don't regret anything, because first of all, and I say it clear, and I usually repeat it, and the, the new people don't like me. Mm. The opposition doesn't like me. Me, I say I'm so grateful to President Museveni. Yeah, okay. I will say it and repeat it again. Because when he came and took over government, eh, he established a political environment mm. that enabled me to realize my childhood dream. My childhood dream was to fight for women's rights, mm. for gender equality, and women's empowerment. I had that dream when I was nine years. That's why I studied law. That's why, for me, when I went to politics, I didn't just go there because I wanted politics. Mm. I went to politics to use it as a platform to espouse the cause for gender equality and women's empowerment. And the good thing, as if, and I call it, that is God's purpose for my life. That's why he gave me my mouth. That's why he gave me my courage. That's why he gave me... Do you know that, by the way, in 1998, I was chosen as one of a hundred women world over who had made a tremendous impact and acted as role models for the women in the whole world. Do you know that? I have my certificate. Mm. If it was not for President from Seven who came in and took over and declared, came with a woman question high upon the agenda, I would have died with my dream because during the time, there is one time after, when we had formed Ackford in Nairobi, mm. after the Nairobi conference, we formed Ackford, and Okero was now in power because Obote was overthrown when they were in Nairobi at the conference. And the, the first lady who had led the delegation never came back. And they had not taken us on their delegation because we are not UPC. Mm. You see? Yes. So we, we, we formed action for development and we started, we wanted to demonstrate against the rape and the murder of women mm. during that Okero time. It was terrible. They were murdering women. They were raping them everywhere. And, uh, and we said, no, we must demonstrate. And when they knew that we were going to go in the city square, the current constitutional mm square they 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 organized that they will go there and rape us and so one woman was working in radio uganda she rang us at the night and said you people don't go to the city square yeah they are going they have planned the army had planned that they will go and rape us and so we said let's go and prove we went to not as demonstrators this time each of us went their own way and walked in front of those shops at the city square but for sure the army had surrounded the city square and they were ready to go and rape us. You can imagine. And it is after that now that uh, President Museven came in with NRIM and he said, women, where are you? Oh, my God. You should read my book, mm. which I wrote. So for me, I don't regret. First of all, he brought that environment. Second, let me tell you whether you like it or not, President Museven's NRIM, the National Resistance Movement, picked us from a deep ditch, a deep ditch. For me, I remember one time I was watching the TV. Imagine I was a lawyer. Lawyers were turned into nothing. We could not talk. We were, <laughs> this old, I can't go into that. It's a long story. But it was too much. One time I remember I saw, uh, was it uh, Tito Kero on TV and the, uh, 
Bazirio Kero. Bazirio Kero. And you know they were not mm. educated. Yes. And Bazirio was saying, you know, Oboche called you the mm. Dutch problem. And oh, I, I, I picked, I think I picked a stone. I said, I'm going to throw this stone at my TV. As if it was the TV which was causing the problem. You can, I'm telling mm. you to see where, how deep we had gone. For sure, anybody who refuses to say that really an RM government, when they came mm. from the bush, they, they lifted a south ditch. I want to say that at least, at least, for the first 10 years, okay. it, was, it was fantastic. Okay. Fantastic. Because for me, when they said, hey, women, where are you? I came out like a dog which was caged somewhere. Mm. But the gate was open. I ran out and fought for the women's cause. And I can tell you, during my time of 20 years in the politics of this country, women really reached somewhere. They really did, especially those in my Mbarara district. You know, Mbarara now is seven districts or whatever. By then it was 49 sub-counties and 10 counties. But women there, even when you go there, these days I meet young boys, they say, Hello, how are you? You were a friend of my mother. She was your agent. Mm. You know, even the family would say, my temp is there, the pictures would be there. And we worked, I can assure you, we worked. And then we came out with the constitution. And you know I was a constitutional commission. Yes, I traversed yeah. the whole mm. country. And we thought to Ugandans and we said this is the first time Ugandans are going to decide to make their nation themselves. And we did. And after doing we that, we did, we did. So for me, mm. I don't regret. I did I he gave me the opportunity to serve my country. He gave me the opportunity. To also be, some, be known. I mean, I want to ask. Mm. Miriam Matembe was there teaching. I was at the Bank of Uganda as a lecturer in a law and English. That name Matembe, the only one who knew it was the, the, the what? The people I was teaching. Who else? And my family. Mm. So but were known because to when NRIM government came in and they embraced it, I ran with my cause to the whole world i'm telling you when one time i stood at an african platform to speak on behalf of uganda you know i used even before i became this minister you know mm. me i was actually cheated all throughout because despite the fact that i was vibrant and working so hard i was busy working 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 other people were busy becoming ministers big 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 and uh, last day at final last minute President Museven decided, I think this woman, because she has integrity and corruption is killing us, let me mm. give her this job. And when I went there and, and, and went with my vibrance and speaking the truth, I could not work. I said, get out of here. So I went. But even before I was a minister, I used to represent Uganda. Me. I used to represent Uganda everywhere. In, in Beijing. In Beijing. In Beijing, when I one day I stood at the international platform in Beijing conference to speak on the participation, the strategies to increase participation of women in politics and governance. And after I have I had talked to this whole vast meeting, people stood up and clapped and clapped. I said, surely, can I now not thank him seven? For, for enabling me, at least as an individual, mm. to realize my vision and my passion. That's why you see me seated at home very comfortable, although still suffering, running with women's cause, because I had a childhood dream. And the Lord enabled me through the government of Museven to realize this childhood dream. And I documented it. And I lived beyond. I'm telling you. And my children grew up. Seven came when my biggest child was 10 years. Eh? And eventually we start, they studied, they finished. I have grandchildren, I have what? So, for me, I don't regret. So I on serve the other hand, God. you're grateful for the cam about the coming uh, of uh, seven. Uh, um, yes, I mean, let me tell you. You people, you are very interesting. You, do you mean you, when you somebody does wrong, Eh? Mm. When somebody ro does wrong, then you, you cancel everything, everything right that he has done. 
Do you cancel everything right that I has done? In fact, me, I, I said goodbye to him very well because I told him, okay. sir, I told him, sir, in Chankwaz 2003, I said, you have done so good. Mm. You have done so good for us. I wouldn't want you being, being called a swine. Like mm. you call others swine. I told him, you see, you call about a swine, you call a mean swine, but they came also as presidents. Now, I wouldn't want you to be called a swine. I want you to finish with the term limit and go home and guide Uganda. Mm. He refused. I told him he refused. Now, if he had really listened to me and, and organized the Ugandans, so that we, we get a new president. The NRM would have won as a party. Because the NRM, by the way, they stole the movement. The, the, the party stole the movement. He's a thief. They stole the movement and made it into a party, which mm. was very wrong. And therefore, it would have won while other parties. And by the way, I had an opportunity to go and talk to him. To go and talk to him to say, please, when we were in the CA, <coughs> we said that we want to, to, to amend the playground, you know, that mm. when you have yes. football and the playground is spoiled, it has pores, it, what, holes and, and what and hills and whatever, you have to repair it. And after repairing it, then you would start playing the football. So we said that the, the football, the democratic football, the ground, the, the democratic ground for Uganda had got pitfalls, had got to hills, has got... So we, ha we have to, to, to clean it mm. and, and level it. And after we had leveled it, then we would go into the real match, the match yeah. mm. political democracy. We would go into a match. That's what we believed. That's what we are saying. That's why we suspended, you know, the political parties, let them be in abeyance, and, and then I remember when we were discussing in CA, Sister Oguaro said, but how can you put us in mutuary? Eh? You put us in mutuary and we cannot go out to operate. I, I stood up, I said, no, Sister, you are not in mutuary, you are in intensive care. You are in intensive care and we are taking care of you. So once you heal, mm. then we shall go, all of us, into the playground. Mm. And we had said that NRIM as a movement will be the mother of the good new political parties. You hear? We were saying all this. And so when, when FDC came onto the scene mm. and President Museven got up to fight the CJ, I went and reminded him. I said, but your excellency, don't you remember we said that the movement would be the womb for the good, new good multi uh, parties to, to form the multi party political system in Uganda? Now, the NRIM party has been born out of the movement. FDC has been born out of movement. So the time has come for the movement to produce the parties. Why don't you leave these two parties yes. to be free mm. and organize and mobilize and then we move on? And I even told him, you have lost the opportunity to, to hand over power peacefully yes. Yes. because you have failed, you have removed the, the wound, the term limit. I said, why don't you accept to be, to retire, to be called the person who built the good multi party political system in Uganda. Mm. Because I was saying, if NRI mobilizes and you leave FDC, because the FD, the members of FDC were all from NRIM anyway. So the NRIM had produced the two parties. And I said, leave BCJ to mobilize, and he will not get a lot, many, many votes. But he will get like 30% when you get like 50%. And then the next year, the, the party, they will increase. And then eventually, by the time you retire, you will, you will have built a good multi-party political system in this country. In other words, the football field mm. would have been cleaned up. Didn't he to your voice? I told him, even if you go and ask him. Me, 
I talk things uh, against him, but at the same time, mm. uh, when I get opportunity, I tell him, and I say the good he, he does. So I don't regret. Okay. What I regret <coughs> is that what I had hoped for is not what happened. Actually, when, when I was still in NRM, I used to see people parting with President Museveni getting so angry, so angry. And I was wondering, why are you so angry? I would ask them, like my uncle Kazora parted mm, first, mm, and, mm. and the banner de Tvigiru. I remember they, they were so passionate with him, and then when they part, they were angry. So I was saying, why are they angry until I parted with him over removal of term limits? Of term limits, yeah, eh? in 2005, eh? yeah. Many, mm. many people who are ignorant, they are all who are malicious. They are saying that, you see, when Matembe was dismissed from being a minister, that's when she, she parted company. No, what made us part was the removal of the term limit. I didn't want the term limit to be mm. removed. Because I was a commissioner and I knew what Uganda yes. want. I knew the background to it. So when we parted on that issue, I got angry. I started getting angry. And I realized why I was getting angry. I had to, to, to repent and abound it. I was getting angry because I came to realize that how can this man make me a fool? Mm. <laughs> so I, I felt that he made me a fool. How could I believe him 100% and become a fool that I was? Mm. So now I realize that's why everybody who parted with him were angry. Because he really makes you look like fools. For you, you are following genuinely 100% knowing that he's with you and you are aiming at one particular thing and that is serving Uganda and developing it and making it so democratic and making human rights enjoyable. For you, that's what is in your head. We want a Uganda, a better Uganda, not a Uganda of wars and fights Dr. and suffering. President Seven yeah. still refers Uganda to a democratic country up to now. But what you say, it's contrary. But what does it matter if somebody says, I'm democratic when you are not? I mean, and let me tell you, he knows. Although he made me a fool and, and I, I believed him after the time I found that him and I were not in, 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 in the same agenda, mm. the same vision. Our visions were different. Mine was a vision for a better Uganda. His was an ambition for life presidency. Okay. So you can see that is the, the difference. Mm. My vision for a better Uganda where both men and women are enjoying life and they are doing very well, mm. no injustice, no what. For him, he didn't have a vision for mm. Uganda. He had ambition to be a life president, which we didn't know. All of us did not know. So he, he uses us like fools, you support, in the end you, you go, in the end you go. So he knows very well that there is no democracy in this country. He knows very well that there is voter purchase. Mm. Purchase, 100% purchase. Let me tell you, I, I, I wanted to go back to, I didn't want to go to politics, but when the elderly people yes. are suffering, as I've told mm. you, the elderly people have suffered in this year, I remember now, being thrown out of, the, of their land, being beaten by their children. I was crying, saying, but who will redeem this? Who can protect the elderly people? Then what do I see? I see that they have created seats for elderly, the elderly, people. The elderly people. I the said, parliament, eh, yeah. God has heard me cry, mm. so he's calling me to go and represent the elderly. And I tell you, I, I had in my mind what I would go and put forward a very organized strategy mm. for the elderly to people represent them, in, yeah, in Uganda. Parliament, yeah? Because the elderly people, are after doing, you remember Uganda is standing on the shoulders of the elderly people. Mm. But once they, they are tired and they retire, they forget them like garbage. They just forget them as if they don't exist. 
and yet other countries they recognize and acknowledge their senior citizens. Mm. So I thought this is my opportunity to go and bring up a strategy to sort out the elderly people. I went to contest for these elections. There was one seat, one woman representative of the elder in the whole country. Now, in all the women in Uganda, really, whom do you see would really run with the whole issue to fight for the elderly people, particularly the women represent the woman representative to be team for the elderly to put the issues of the women at the table of the elderly conversation. Who would you see would be the one? I, with all my three degrees, mm. with all my past experience, commissioner, minister, pan-African parliament, what, 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 I offered my candidature. Do you know the, the woman whom they brought to Nguyenara Yemu? You will never hear her. I can I assure you, you either. can never. Mm. She was a community development officer a community development officer who studied that in Samizi long time ago, the story they mm. tell. And that is the woman who defeated Miriam Atembe to represent the elder. I'm not being proud, mm. but I'm bringing things on the table so that you may see. They brought over, oh, it was 150 million, which the NRM gave to that woman. And it was real purchase. I went there. I think God wanted me to go and see what kind of elections take place. Purchase, bark purchase, getting all the buses, putting them all the putting all the uh, electorate because mm. it was the the senior season, bringing them, putting them in hotels, feeding them in hotels paying them transport while the electoral commission had already paid them and putting them in a, a, in a, a venue to vote. So it was already concluded, already bought, and I saw, oh, voter purchase. And President Museven knows that if there were free and fair elections, he would not be the, the president of Uganda right so now. So did you go into and that he would not be, he would not be rejected. Mm. He would be, I mean, he would be honored. I mean, he would have retired and be honored and now look what Uhuru in Kenya. He's rested. Mm. And so many have rested. Now why should we be now? Like, for instance, you are telling me, do you regret, when I don't regret serving him seven, then people say, ah, look what her, she's with him. Mm. B because he, when you overstay and you do wrong things, then the wrong erases the good. In the recent interview, President Seven said he'll be remembered for saving Uganda from uh, a failed state. Uh, he'll be remembered for, of course, reviving security, uh, development, the economy is growing. Do you concur with him? He saved Uganda from a failed state. Where is it now? The truth is, what he's saying, he redeemed it. It had died. He redeemed it mm. and raised it up. But what does it matter when you, 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 you revive a person and then kill that person? You revive and kill the person. Mm. If President Museven had got off the scene at the time of removal of term limit, mm. if he had come with a vision to prepare Uganda never to go back into the pit, eh? he would not have come with the idea of life presidency. Because me, I want to ask you, how, how does he redeem Uganda from a failed state when he has not redeemed it from dictatorship, mm -hmm. life presidency. Because why he went to the bush was because Uganda was going in a failed state because of dictatorship and militarization. That's why it had gone into the failed state. Now he came, he picked it out. And when it's, he started building it, then he became a dictator who has militarized the state, and therefore Uganda has gone back to where he had picked it. And, and so it, Uganda is it, a failed it, state. It has not reached where he had picked it. Mm. It had not reached. It has not reached where he had picked it. But let him continue. Let him continue because every single year our matters are not getting worse. Every single year 
are matters not make getting worse. Doctor, this year we've been crying about, and actually I saw you last time or previously, uh, crying out for the help of, uh, for the release of uh, uh, Joseph Kableta, of which recently President Seven responded to that, that uh, the abductions we've been crying about, he's not aware of them, he's not aware of abductions, kidnaps, he's... He said that? Yes, he's aware of the arrests of people in drones and what, but they are not abductions as we term them. What are they? They are arrests, not abductions. And eventually are they seen? Because that is exactly what Amin was doing. You could come and abduct people and they disappear and we don't see them. Mm. I want to ask all those people who were abducted during elections, mm -hmm. Whose wives are still crying? Whose mothers are still crying? Whose, whose children are still crying? Eh? Where are they? Because for me, when you come, there is a procedure of arresting an alleged offender. And by the way, President Museven and his team need to know yes. that according to Uganda law, everybody is presumed innocent until proved guilty. That's why the procedures for arresting are there. They come and arrest you in a dignified manner. Yes. Because you are declared, you are presumed innocent, but there are certain charges which are being raised, which are not yet proved, and therefore you are an innocent Ugandan. That's why the policeman must come, identify himself, mm. put forward his identity card, I'm um, so and so, I'm Miriam Atembe, I'm an inspector of police, I've been uh, sent here to arrest you because you are alleged to have, you know, uh, uh, stolen somebody's cow. Okay? I say, okay, I walk with you because I'm supposed to bow to the law. So I walk with you, we go to police, they put me in police, there is a law which says that once I'm arrested, I should not stay in police beyond 48 hours. Actually, they used to be over 12. But when we were in CA, mm. we said that, look here, our systems are broken. We don't have sufficient mm. staff. We don't yes. have enough. We're in the villages. We don't have courts. We don't have what? Let us be reasonable. And they increased the hours. We made them 48 hours. Mm. And while you are there in 48 hours, you are not denied your relatives to see you. You are not denied your lawyer to come and see you. They, you are allowed. You are an innocent person. They visit you. They talk to you. They do all this. And they, then within 48 hours, they go and charge you. When you are charged, you, are, you go, to, go to, mm. to prison. When you go to prison, there is a law. I think almost every offense is bailable. There are very few capital offenses which are not bailable. Yes. Eh? And so when you go to prison and the, 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 your relatives come, they apply for bail. Mm. Yes, bail is not automatic. There are certain conditions which you must fulfill. Yes. And when you fulfill them, then they release you on bail. So that because you are innocent, you should not be staying in this prison for what? Because they are imprisoning you for nothing. Now they release you on bail, you keep reporting, and there is certain limited time of time for a case to be decided. They should decide the case. Either you, you have won or you have lost. If you have lost, you go to, to prison. You have a right to appeal. Now, those variable offenses, the law which I studied, which I knew, unless it has changed, is that once those capital offenses which are not bearable, when you stay in prison for more than one year, Yes. With your case not established, you not had or mm. concluded, you get automatic bail. That's the law which I studied. Yes. I haven't checked to see whether that has changed. But now, in Uganda, the drone come, takes you, you disappear. If you do not have people who can run for you, like this carburetor. Mm. What redeemed carburetor was one. He had CTV cameras. Mm. So they had seen all those people who arrested them. They said, okay, you don't show us where he is, we are going to, to, to zoom you out, and they will see you. 
and they said, eh, hey, those people have families. If they are zoomed out, they will be seen. You can you imagine? So, in Uganda, there is total dictatorship, total shutdown of Ugandans not to speak, total fear, which has gripped people, and total violation of human rights, and capture of state institutions which cannot operate independently. We do not have the principle of separation of powers. As you, the, those so magistrates, they operate from powers above. The judges, powers from above. So the institutions are scared. They are scared of their jobs. They are scared. Mm -hmm. And what has caused this dictatorship, autocratic leadership, mm -hmm. there is total autocratic leadership in this country, powers from above, powers from above. If President M7 is not aware hmm, mm. that there they are no abductions. abductions, then I think he has now come to admit the fact that when you stay in power for too long, mm. people get used and everybody does what they want and you lose control. You lose control of the nation. So if he, according to him, he doesn't see any abductions, if they are not there, then he has lost control over this nation. And I know I live in this country. At one time, President Obote, by that time, Rutwa, mm. okay, Rutwa removed President Obote. Obote had lost control over the nation long ago. I think it was these Raka CCs who had authority, and remember they are now in his in Museven's government. Raka CCs had authority, and they would say, power from above, power from above. For me, the moment the word power from above started applying here in Uganda, that's when I knew my dear president brother had lost it. That's when I knew he had lost it. Because powers from above, above where? Because anybody now can do anything. Mm. And they think they say it is from above. That's where we are. That's where we are now. Yeah. And you may find many of these things he doesn't even know. But if somebody, like the land, like all this land grabbing and so on. You think he knows that people who are grabbing the land, but they come and say powers from above. And at times you find that they are the ones. And those ones who are being used... The big state agents who are used to keep him in power, eh? you find they are the ones who are doing all these wrong things. Does now, he, anybody can arrest any, anybody saying powers from above. Does he still deserve to be called a president? Because when he swears For in, me, don't ask me such a question. Because when he swears in, he says, I will protect, preserve, and uh, of course, uh, defend the constitution, protect Ugandans with their uh, property. Let me tell you, I'm a person who. Who, 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 who believes in God? Now the question you are raising, I'll put it to, to the Bibirko, Bibirko, the scriptures. You know, Saul, King Saul, was doing very, very wrong. <laughs> was doing mm. very wrong to, King, to David. David had delivered Saul. David had, you know, when Saul was fearing Goliath and that kind of thing. And David had delivered Saul from that, and Saul became jealous and started hating and persecuting David. Eh? Mm. But David was saying, you don't touch the anointed of the Lord. Mm. And in fact, God gave David, uh, David three, two times when he could have killed Saul. But he said, no, you don't touch the anointed of the Lord. The word of God says, that all leadership comes from where? From God. From God. So for me, whether it is through reading, mm. whether it is through what, as far as I know, if that leadership is from, is from God, through reading and that yeah. kind of thing. Is it still from God? Do you Where read you? the Bible? Nebuchadnezzar, you know, this God is amazing. God, don't joke with God. God is amazing. He can see you as wrong people and mm. you have become sinners, you are witches, you are crooked and he can punish you. He can punish okay. you with a leadership that will deal with you. 
You hear? Yeah. You need to read the Bible properly. But the question you are asking is, is does he still deserve to be called the president? Who is he? He's the president of Uganda. He's the president of Uganda according to the law, according to the authority, according to his swore by the constitution. The electoral commission declared him president of Uganda. Who are you not to call him president of Uganda? He's the president of Uganda. The president who doesn't know what happens. Do we happens. have any other president? The president who doesn't know what have happens you, in his country. Have you ever read the, uh, the State of Africa, 50 Years of Independence by Meredith? There is a book called The State of Africa, 50 mm. Years of Independence. This man was documenting the long ago 50 years of independence. We need to document 60 because things are still the same. In that book, you'll find that some presidents who even took the, the, the central bank into their house. Mm. <laughs> they were keeping the money in their, in their houses. houses yep. You need to read that book. Africans, Africans, I don't know who created us. I know God created us, but I don't know what went wrong with it. He was keeping the money in the in the in the in the in the house, mm. in bringing the whole bank in the house. But he still remained a president. Mm. So they remain. I mean, remained a president, and he was running, running, saying, "I'm here," reaching Busia, saying, "I'm the president," running until you get another president. The president who is there is the one who remains the president. So whether he knows what is going on whether he doesn't know. But what I know is that at his age right now, I mean, we, we need to be realistic. First <laughs> of all, I don't know what he wants. Yes. I really don't know what he wants. And I talked to him many times. You said President Mseven, he says Uganda is not a failed state. Yes. But I want to categorically say it clear, and I want him to hear me that President Museveni is a failed leader. Okay. Why? Because a leader who cannot have a follower. Mm. For the last 36 years, we are going into 40. Yes. And you've been leading a country, and you look among your people, and you don't see anybody to take your place. As a leader, you have totally failed. Because leaders, leadership is about service. And as you serve your people, you are concerned with them. And you are saying, when I leave, I must leave my trait behind. Mm. I must leave the role models mm. behind. There must be, a, when president says, if I quit, when I see these people who kneel to him, this empty, I'm sorry, but I'm going to call them empty-headed. I'm sorry, I'm calling you people who go and bow to the president and say, please don't leave. If you leave, Uganda is finished. I must call you, what word did I use? <laughs> <laughs> I have forgotten. forgotten. <laughs> I've forgotten the word. <laughs> but surely, uh, I question, do you have heads? I mean, how can you eh, yeah. cry? There are three generations now. Three generations and you are crying. When you leave us, the country is finished. When you leave us, 40 years you've been leading Uganda. And when you leave Uganda, the country is finished. Then you have not led. Mm. I, I want everybody to hear this, whether they hate me or not. They must know what leadership is all about. It is about grooming people to take after you, to continue running with the vision that you came with. Mm. When you ask me, Amatembe, I'm sure out there, I have so many women, the NGOs, the organizations, I meet even young girls, they tell me, they call me Mama Matemba at home. So, because I led with a passion, I ran with the service, I did and did, and I let it go, it is there. But now, th when I see these people, this doctor, this hopeless doctor, mm. eh, how can you, you know, in the Bible it says, Ephesians, Paulo said, you Ephesians, 
Where are they Galatians? The Galatians. He said yeah. the Galatians mm. out there. Who bewitched who you? Bewitched you yeah. Who bewitched you? Mm. You have ears you can't see, uh, hear. You have eyes you can't see. Sure, in this country, real in this country, however much you love, by the way, I love President um, Mr. Seven. Leave alone the president. You mm. leave the word president. <laughs> I love Mr. Seven. I've already told you what he did for me. Eh? But I, I love him enough to tell him, please, sir, grandpa, you have done enough. You need to retire. But when I see people come and tell him, sir, when you are not there, we are finished, then they are already finished, these pharaohs. So that means his leadership has finished them. It has finished people. It has finished the nation. Mm -hmm. They are hopeless. The only hope they have is in him, which is totally wrong. And me, I end up by asking, but surely President Museveni, what do you want? What do you want? Why do you demean? I remember Mont telling him, sir, remember your legacy. In 2003, this is how many years after? 20. We told him. So for me, whether the state is not failed, but his leadership is a failure. You cannot lead and have nobody to go into your footsteps. As we wind up, Dr. Lela... And this business of bringing the sun. Uh -uh. Yes, that's where I was uh -uh. coming, actually. Uh -uh. He says... Uganda. Uganda is a nation. It is not a home. Mm. It is not a personal home. It is not a family. It is a, fam a family of many, and mm. it is a nation. Therefore, I saw this, uh, whom I call, I use the help me to call this hopeless. Ho hopeless. Mm. They are hopeless because they don't have hope in God. Okay. They are hopeless. I call them hopeless and helpless. When I saw the people in West Nairo, Simon, there was a video which was trending. Mm. Mm. And there was this woman, she said, Mama Terego. And there was another woman, they represent uh, Arua, Western Nile. And they were saying, this is the best choice. This son, because he's been nurtured at his feet, because he knows what goes on, he knows what goes on in the family of Museven, but not in the president, in the nation of Uganda. You imagine members of parliament thinking like that. When I say that they are blind and they, are, they can't see and they can't hear, am I wrong? You are a member of parliament and you go and you bow and say, please, all of you, we are here for most project is the only one because he's been living in the home with the president. Was he living there as a deputy president? Was he managing the state, the nation's affairs with their family? Let him be the heir to his mm. father's family. Mm. But the air to Uganda, and you see the well, members of parliament, they were there dancing, eating. I saw them on the video, and there is this Mama Terego. Come and I give you breasts, Manivichi. Nonsense! Nonsense! Of recent, in this interview, of course, which he did in the US, he said he has no, he's not aware of the threat. His son, Mohoz Kainero Gabaz, of which uh, tweeted on his Twitter handle, of which he has threatened to crash all people against him, including journalists, calling them terrorists. Where does that take us? The dad says, my son, I'm not aware of the tweets. However, I'm aware of the tweets like uh, about sports, but the most controversial ones, but, you know, he's not aware of them, you know, if threatening I, people. You know, if I put that in, in godly terms, because I was, I was thinking, you know, I pray. Yes. I was thinking and asking God, what is this happening? And, and God was showing me that he's showing us the, the level where we have reached. He's showing us the level where we have reached, where the son and the father... Uh, do you know Solomon? Yes, uh, the, King uh, Solomon. Hey, mm. you, you know who was it that went... No, David. King David, yeah. The, the son went to fight David, you remember? Mm. At one time. But David was a kingly man, so he won. But when you see the son running with a project in the midst of hunger, in the midst of suffering, and so mm. on, all the amount of money that was put there. And then the next time we see the president, 2026, they are moving around the whole country. This is just one year, two years down the road. After then the election, RIM government yeah. people are moving around the country, mobilizing for 2026. 
elections. And I saw this man to Adung. For me, when I see young people who should, I want to thank God because he gave me brain and wisdom. Eh? Because when I see young people like Todong, who should be having brain, wisdom, and knowledge to be able to say, ah, uh ah, -uh, this nation, this is our generation. Eh? He's there saying, we met and we agreed that 26, 2026, President Museven must remain and remain until we say no. Nonsense. Now I must use my words. That's total nonsense. Eh? And, and it is very bad for our country. And that's why I say that God is showing and saying, mm. this is where you are. This is where you are going. But one thing I want to say, by the way, which the young people listening to me must, must know, is that every generation has its purpose yes. to serve. Yes. And the word of God says that when King David had served his purpose in his generation, he rested. Me, as far as I'm concerned, President Museven, I'm not saying resting, dying. Mm. As far as I'm concerned, he should not be the president of this nation. He should have retired. That's me. That's me. And you've been consistent Because to that. what I see going on is a nation gone. Because of materialism, because over the, over the year which bewitched. You know, at times I sit and say, but... Is this witchcraft which is working over people? Because how can young people eh, forget that, Bow down that, and, forget that mm. President Museveni, when he was a young man and he saw bad leadership, he got up. He went, me, I, I was in a, a UPM. Yes. When President Museveni came here, no, not President, when Mr. Yoel yes. Museveni came here, as a young man, when he was appointed Minister of Defense or whatever, oh. whatever, I was here, a young woman, you know? By then, I think I was, was it 27 or around, was I 28 or something like that? Young, vibrant, so and energetic. Yes, yeah. and we ran with him. We said, yeah, these other parties were no good, UPC, DPR, UPM. We ran with a new party. We ran with him, and we lost. By the way, they never beat us. They never tortured us. Yes. We lost, and then he decided to go to the bush and fight. These young people, I've been telling young people, when, pres when President Museven saw that things were going wrong, and he was a young man, yes. and this was his generation, he rose up. He stood up, yeah? Stood up, mobilized young people. Mm. All these guys were a victim. They died, mm. they are not there mm. now. Mm. If they were there, by the way, many of these people, they will not be with him, I'm telling you. Because they had gone to redeem this nation. They had gone to redeem this nation. And they came and redeemed it. Now that it has gone in a wrong direction. I don't advise them to go to the bush. Yes. Me, I advise them to rise up and say, this is our generation and it is time for us to have our generation. And mobilize themselves here under the law, not going to fight. Me, I don't want them to fight. I want them even to go and tell President Museven. And okay. Te, and tell him, using the opportunity to bow down. And, and yeah. tell him, sir, you know you have really served us. We came from far, but right now, we are here jobless. Eh? We are suffering. Marijuana, alcoholism, because we, we are lost. We don't have, you know, what to do? The robbery, corruption has finished all the money. The schools are down. The teachers cannot get salary. The doctors, we are here. So please, sir, you served your purpose. You, you, we are here. We are educated. Okay, we are here. But we need time to organize ourselves and also find a way and a new strategy of leading ourselves. Doctor, as we end this interview, do you see President M7 back on the ballot in 2026 or because I've interviewed some senior citizens saying that he would die in power. He has no hopes of even handing uh, over power to he, his son. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. For me, I don't know, Bambi, what happened to this man. I don't know why he loves this power this much. And you know, <laughs> when we were there in the cabinet, President Seven used it, not in the cabinet, actually, I think even in, in the parliament, when we would be closed alone talking. He used to laugh at those people. He was laughing at Kenya, in fact, at Moi. He mm, said, you yes. know what? I think these people, why they, they want to stay there? 
is because they fear of what yes. they have done. Yes. He yeah. used to say it, mm. and please put it there. Yes. He used to say they fear, I think they have fear of what they've done. They fear that they will be persecuted. They fear the consequences. And he was saying, I think we should pass a law where we say that once the president has finished, mm -hmm. they should not persecute them. He was telling us oh, that if we pass that okay. law, mm. then they would be able to, to, you know, to feel free to retire. You've forgotten to pass the law. Oh, no, he was just discussing, talking oh, about okay. it. He was advising Now, now when, I, when I see him mm. da, loving powers, look, look, you are telling me that when he went to America and they asked him, are you coming again? He said, it is Ugandans who will choose. No! Ugandans, let me ask you, can Ugandans come and pick me from this house and take me to contest for, for elections when I don't want can they tell me? Can Ugandans come and say, Matembe, we want you come? If they came, I would tell them, now you know what? If you think I'm your president and you want me, eh? you go and make sure you, you win everything. And when you are through, you give me the chair. You but the president who says, when NRM calls me, I will go, mm. and you're a human being. Do the people choose for you? Do people choose for President Museveni? Isn't he, uh, didn't Nyerere, didn't Honorable President Nyerere, she was called by his people, they said you are not going yet. He told them, you people, no, it is time for me to rest. Because if I don't rest, when will other people take the position? She said, no, let us organize, let me go, and he left. So this horror, I, I mean, I don't know, I don't want to abuse the president, I want to wa use the word nonsense. But this horror thing, or, or this horror pretentious, mm. pretentious excuse of covering your determination to stay in power by saying that for me, if, uh, if the NRIM says yes. yes, I will go. Why? What have you done to mobilize leadership in NRIM? But do you think NRIM is a party? NRIM is equal to Museven. It's still called it because a party. Because any silly party, I will call it silly this time, mm. any silly party which has no rules, which has no leadership capacity, which bows to the whims of one person, which cannot have primaries for presidential elections, is not any useful party at all. It is, in fact, not a party. Doctor, I wonder what happens to people when they are elected. Because you've been, uh, uh -huh. this is the, la the final question. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I don't know what happens to people. I remember your good friend Crispin Kahelu was in uh, Sedo. <laughs> uh, I don't know what happens to them when they, are, when they get into positions. Now the human rights... Uh, Commission is one of the most silent organizations we've ever, we've ever had in Uganda. Mm. The atrocities are happening, human rights violations and whatever. They're enjoying life in the U.S., whatever. And Ooh. They, uh, no, but you see commission. one thing you need to know. What happens to people when uh -uh. they go to those positions? You need to separate politics eh, from work, the work of government. You get it and the civil society. Mm. Now, Human Rights Commission is a government institution. It is not a civil society organization. It is a government institution. And it, is, it works according to the, the rules that they have, mm. okay? So when you go there and become a commissioner, and it was not wrong to appoint Kahir to be a commissioner, because, I mean, young people, can't they get jobs? Will they, do you have to, to hide away <laughs> so that you don't work for government? You see, the, the thing that disturbs me is people don't know that working for government and working for the nation, they are two different things. Mm. Hmm? If you are working, I may be in opposition, but I get a job in government. Mm. Yes. Like if they make, they make me the chairperson 
Judicial Service Commission mm. me, 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 mm. if they appointed me I would go and I normally I should go and take oh, the appointment. That comes to pass, I, I should go and uh, do the appointment. But that does not mean that M7 has bowed to me. But because people don't separate working for the nation and working for a specific government, they think whenever they give you a job, they think you have been bought. And that's why some of us, well, when they say come, you say, ah, I must keep mm. my integrity. But people should be able to understand that as a Ugandan in opposition, I should also work for Uganda. Mm. I mean, it is a nation. I must work for my nation. But say that when you are in opposition, you cannot get appointment in any government job, which is not politicking. If it is politicking, yes. But if it is not politicking, then you go and do the job. Therefore, Kair used to be Citizens Coalition for Electoral Democracy. Mm. He mobilized. He did all the wonderful good work in Citizens Coalition for Electoral Democracy. But he had retired from the Citizens yes. Coalition for Electoral Democracy. But they, they, I think they know he's interested in human rights. He's in, and moreover, he had worked on a certain, is it civic, society, civic education mm. for public education? And I think that's why they appointed him to go to promote that civic education within the Human Rights Commission because he loves it and he, he would have gone to educate the people about human rights. Now he's there in the Human Rights Commission. Unless you tell me that Kaheru is there doing wrong there, being used to do wrong things. I think this time if, around, they, if that you, commission they, is very silent. It's not, the, the, let me tell you, that, commi not representing that, commission the is, people. that commission is chaired by a person who is... I think a hundred percent agent of President Museven is like the other commission, this electoral commission. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now, if that commission is chaired by that person, and the commissioners are there supposed to work, do they, unless they resign, do they now separate? Go, they go. Do they go and do their own things which are not within the commission? And secondly, I understand that commission is completely unfunded. Mm, that, okay. it's, that it has no funds, so they cannot go and mobilize people in the Human Rights Commission. Okay. But when it comes talking about... So it's a toothless but when uh, it commission. Ca yeah, it is a toothless commission. It is just there for a public show. You cannot be interested in violating human mm. rights and silencing Ugandans and then promote Human Rights Commission. Your final, can't. your final remarks to the country and how do we achieve justice, the one you're fighting for, how do we achieve a free country, a democratic country come 2023, a country that follows human rights, that uh, of course follows the constitution that you promulgated in 1995, you in, know, part, in your okay. parting shot, doctor. For me, we have discussed all this. Mm. In, the, in the physical, in the physical, we are in a desperate, helpless mm. state, which we, physical as human beings, mm. cannot change. Okay. 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 But in the spirit, okay. because me, I trust in God. I okay. believe in God, and I know the motto of this country it says, "Even for God and my country, although we have abused it, we say we lay our future." in the hands of God, mm. although we, we have laid it in witchcraft and so on, but I still feel that God is the owner of this nation. God has authority and power over this nation. But the way God works is, he says, call upon me and I will answer you. Repent and ask for forgiveness and write to me, I will come and hear your land. Mm. And it is there in Ezitini Chronicles, chapter 7, it verse 1 to 14 or something, I may not get the scripture well. He says, when my people who are called by my name, hmm, remember, they humble themselves, they return turn away from their sins mm. and they call upon me I will hear them from heaven and hear their land 
I'll hear from heaven, forgive them and heal their land. Our land needs healing. And uh, the call I'm telling to Ugandans, all of you Ugandans who are called by God's name, those all the Christians, all those who know that God exists and they believe in his son Jesus Christ as the Redeemer, all of you seek God. I want to tell you, each individual should go into their closet and pray to God and seek him and repent and ask him what role they can play. Each, I'm not saying go and pray and pray and pray 24 hours. In your prayer, ask God, what can you do? What role can you do to redeem Uganda from this desperate and hairy place state of affairs? And God will answer you and we shall be redeemed. For me, I'm not hairy place, I'm not hopeless, I'm not worried. I put everything into God and to Akaraba, I have seen him deliver us from Amin. Mm. I saw him deliver us from Rutwa Okeru. I saw him deliver us from Ma, 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 was Mwanga. I saw him deliver us from Obote too. I will see him deliver us again. I only pray that I'll be alive to see and tell the story. Otherwise, I wish you Ugandans happy Christmas. Merry yeah. Christmas, yeah. please. Don't drive bad on the road you are finishing, yes. people. Yes. Be patient. I want to, by the way, bring my condolences to this member of parliament. Really. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was a big tragedy. It is so sad. Please be patient. Be patient and consider the other road users. Yes. And don't go into drunkardness and we need to bow to God. I want every church to fill up and cry to God so that we can be redeemed from this suffering. Amen. That's Dr. Miriam Matembe for you. Of course, we do appreciate your time, Doctor. Finish, finish and of course, we, uh, of course, uh, you thanks finished. for the dedication. And we can, of course, call it a I wrap go. from here. And we say, of course, uh, we will meet next time. As she has already said, yes, uh, of course, in the recent past, only eight days, accidents have claimed 83 lives. Yeah, that's uh, very, very worrying. In just eight days, yeah, 83 lives are gone. So you need to drive, not carelessly, but carefully. And uh, even still, this goes to uh, those who are... Uh, uh, in position to cater for the roads and whatever because there are many roads which are in a very, very wounding state. So as you drive, you need to know how you drive. There is a way how you drive in Uganda compared to other countries. My friend Fad will tell me, you don't drive like this or oh, the straight way, you know, because of the potholes and manholes which are really unhandled. You need to drive caring for your life. Uganda Yancha.